Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and very good day to you all. In this video, we're going to talk about design consideration from the chapter 12 on general bearing from the book Sickly Mechanical Engineering Design. Okay, let's continue. So, we may distinguish between two groups of variables the, in the design of sliding bearings. The first group, the value that we can control, which is the viscosity, the load per unit of projected area, the speed, and bearing dimension. So, what does it mean by this four statement? Okay, viscosity, that is, it is we that can determine whether we want to use this kind of oil, whether we want to use this kind of lubrication. Let's say you want to service your car. It is your choice. You want to choose 10,000 kilometer oil, 5,000 kilometer oil, the oil this brand, the oil that brand. Okay, it's up to you. Okay. And the load for uh, per unit on bearing projected area, meaning that, okay, this is the projected area. Okay, this is the uh, general bearing. Okay, the long, the length, okay, the width of the bearing, it, it is up to you. Okay, and the speed, it is up, up to you. You want to low speed, you want to high speed. And then the bearing dimension, R, C, beta and L, okay? So, this is what you can control. And of this oil variable, designing it usually has no control over the speed because it specified by overall design of the machine. So, when you are designing the uh, general bearing, many factors we take into consideration. Speed is among the factors. Uh, and the speed is related to other other things okay uh, so you may control the speed you may cannot control the speed okay uh, sometimes viscosity uh, the specified in mass okay and then you can read all the thing this thing and the second group are dependent variables designer cannot control except indirectly by changing one of the more of the unit Okay, and then uh, there are the coefficient of friction, temperature rise, volume flow rate, and minimum film thickness. Okay, like this. I give you example of a car because everyone have a car, and you have seen a car. Uh, when you service your car, okay, the mechanism, the engine, everything is very good. Okay, after 5,000 km, after 10,000 km, you have to do the service. Okay, and then the coefficient of friction uh, at the beginning, after you service, and nearly to the service time, it, it, it changes. Okay, because of the heat making the lubrication become oil, become darker and everything. And then the temperature rise when you operate your machinery of course temperature will go up and then the volume flow rate meaning that uh, the 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 flow rate of the uh, because if you can google the image of the uh, general bearing you can see there is a this is let's say this place this the point that you pour fill up with the lubricant and then uh, how much intake it depends on the machine and then minimum film thickness maybe if the lubricant is new the thickness is high and then after for a long period of time the thickness become it will eventually reach reaches the metal to metal contact which is we want to avoid okay and then this is the figure 1211 uh, how significant speeds varies you can see here a is common bearing case, B is load vector move at the same speed of the journal, C is the load vector move half journal speed, and D journal and bushy move at the same speed. And this is how it works. And this is the performance factors. The group of variable cells variables tells us how well bearing is performing and, and hence we may regard them as performance factors. 
Certain limitations on their values must be imposed by the designer to ensure satisfactory performance. These limitations are specified by the characteristic of bearing material and of the lubricant. Fundamental problem in bearing design, therefore, is to define satisfactory limits for the second group of variables, okay, which is the variable that you cannot control. Okay, so what are the performance factors? Okay, next section will uh, the significant angular speed. Okay, the title is significant angular speed. Next section will be is the mean several important charts relating to key variables to sum of fee number. Remember. The sum of the number, there is, there is an equation and in the next video we will do a lengthy uh, exercise to, no, to do some uh, sum of the equation, numbers and everything. Uh, so at this point we have assumed that only the general rotation and the general rotation speed used in sum of the number, it has been discovered that angular speed, angular speed, okay, they use in sum of the uh, Angular speed n that is significant to hydrodynamic equilibrium performance is n equals to nj plus nb minus 2 nf. So nj is the general angular speed. Okay, general angular speed. This is let's say my fan. This is a bushing. This is the general marker fan is the general. This is like a bushing. So general speed. Okay, general speed. Okay. and then bearing angular speed okay and then load vector angular speed so when determining the sum of free number for general bearing use equation 12 13 above and when entering n the general angular speed okay figure 12 11 shows several situation for determining general speed so this is the trampless design criteria for general bearing if you can read this, it will say that general. Uh, it will say that uh, in the end we want to avoid metal to metal contact. In order to do that, uh, a trampler, there is a person called trampler. Uh, he design and he suggests that there will be a minimum thickness, minimum thickness of. Uh, Okay, minimum thickness, meaning that H naught is minimum. You see here, at the bottom, let's say this is the bottom of the bushing. Okay, this is the journal. Okay, this is the journal, meaning the sharp side journal. Between this shaft and the journal is a lubricant. This is a lubricant. Okay. The the height, okay, that the barrier between the general and the bushing below is the height H naught. H naught. Okay. We want to avoid metal to metal contact because. Uh, for obvious reason, when metal to metal contact it happen, debris will happen because it become wear and tear. And, be, and, and then we become wear and tear. Uh, some of the particles of the metal will come out. We want to avoid that. Okay. So this is the minimum thickness. Tampler, trampler, uh, suggest using this equation. H not more than 0 0.02 uh, plus 0 0.04 d inchi and d is the general diameter in inches this is the general diameter okay so at least there is some distance okay although distance is so little must have distance okay so lubrication is a mixture of hydrocarbon that reacts to increasing in temperature by vaporizing lighter components, leaving the heavier. So you have learned in your chemical class, maybe uh, in your syllabus, in other subject, you learn about chemistry, uh, about our petrol, uh, okay, our petrol uh, from the from the ground, from the sea, when 
uh, it will be processed, it will burn, and then it will leave the hydrocarbon. Okay, when the temperature is rise, rising, uh, some of the uh, hydrocarbon will remain because it will burn out and then it leaving the hydrocarbon. And then this hydrocarbon will, will become small, small particle. And then in the end, it will become so many. That is why when you service your car, uh, if you when you buy the oil, you see the oil is shining and everything. And after 10,000 kilometers, you service your car, you see the oil become dark. That dark is because of hydrocarbon. Okay? Because hydrocarbon is, that is why you need to service your car regularly. And uh, ongoing research, is it, on, it is an ongoing research. Many researchers doing research on lubricant, uh, meaning that um, better lubricants in nowadays. You can see better lubricants in nowadays. But this is for uh, another topic. Meaning that this lubric lubricant and when it become uh, so many, the, the operation will become more costly because the load to the load to move the general it, uh, it increase because uh, it become the lubricant become heavier because of this hydrocarbon. Okay, so the for light 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 or a sample limits the maximum filler lubricant to uh, below to 150 Fahrenheit. You can convert to degrees. Uh, I don't have the conversion here, but you can take the calculator. You can Google what is the conversion to 150 Fahrenheit to degrees. Uh, this is. Uh, you should operate not more than that, okay? Not more than that uh, operation, okay? Always check with lubricant manufacturer, okay? Some oils can operate at slightly higher temperature. Always do checking with the lubricant manufacturer. And the general bearing often consists of ground of ground steel working uh, again a softer, usually non-ferrous bushing in or in starting load at there is metal to metal contact, average generation of wear particle, which is over time can change the geometry of the bushing. Exactly what is a starting load? Okay. Let's say this is a bushing. My cardboard and I'm holding is a bushing. And then this is the journal. Okay. When the machine off at night, you you off the machine. Okay. The journal will go down at this position because of gravity the journal will go down like this okay and then up. of course when you clean it up no lubricant everything the journal will go out go down like this okay journal meaning the shaft touches the bottom of the bushing metal to metal contact this is the shaft is metal the bushing is metal metal to metal contact okay when you start the machine okay when you start the machine you okay when you start the machine the general will move okay when when the general move some of the particle then it touch will come out some of the particle will come out okay okay now it come up a little bit then tomorrow you start again then tomorrow start again accumulate to one year two year and then at the bottom of the bushing we will wear and tear they become wear and tear here okay try to understand it meaning that let's say if you physically touch the the bottom of the bushing it will become you will feel with your hand a groove like a groove that is theoretically what i'm going uh, this slide says that I, I give an analogy like that okay maybe you will do it maybe you can you cannot do it but after for a long period of time if you touch the bottom of the bushing you will, may feel with your hand a groove okay a groove uh, this is why uh, 
that is why it is suggested by Trumpler that the starting load is uh, below 300 PSI, meaning you start not that too fast, but slowly start, slowly start, okay? This is become, uh, this is the call starting load. Okay, if the load is general, load, if the load on general battery suddenly increase, the increase in film, tep uh, uh, in film temperature in LS is immediate. Since ground vibration to pass in trunk, train, a uh, tremor open pressure, Trumpler used a design factor of two or more on the running load. Meaning that when you design the bearing, it is suggested you give the design factor as two. Because imagine anything can happen. Let's say your machine is located near a highway. Everyday car coming. Everyday lorry come. Everyday train come. Okay. This become vibration, tremors, tremors and everything. Meaning that suppose your machine is not moving. But vibration happen, vibration happen, meaning your uh, some of the general some the your general bearing will go up and down, up and down, and increase the load. Okay, okay. So that is why you should uh, use design factor of two or more to when designing this uh, this general. Okay. Many of Trumpler's design are still operating today, long after his consulting hour was over. Clearly, they constitute good advice on to the beginning designer. So, this is Trumpler's uh, design. Okay, we should thank Trumpler uh, for all his suggestion. Okay, so that's all for this video. In the next video, we are going to do a long video on relation of variables. Okay, so thank you very much.